It's a Mourinho Tuchel showdown. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Welcome back to Football Therapy. It's me again, your host, Jan. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well, mate. I really do hope that. And welcome to your preview for Chelsea versus Tottenham. A huge game. Mourinho versus Tuchel. The first time Tuchel's coming up against Jose Mourinho. He understands the importance of this game, this London derby. Chelsea's probably most hated opponent in Tottenham Hotspur. They uh, got battered by Brighton. They're most likely to be without Harry Kane. So you know they will just come out with a performance against Chelsea. It's just how the narrative works. So in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to certain things Thomas Tuchel said in his pre-match press conference, give you my speculated lineup for the game, talk about players and positions, who might play, who might miss out, and generally just get into it and have fun. Let's enjoy ourselves today. God, that sounds cheesy. Anyway, if you're digging the content, man, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notifications icon. I know it just sounds like a broken record, but this is what you ask as a YouTuber. You want more people to enjoy your stuff. So, you know, enjoy it. <laughs> if you do enjoy it, drop a like, because that lets me know that you're enjoying it. All right then, let's get into today's match preview. So yes, Thomas Tuchel had his pre-match press conference and a lot of positive stuff that I enjoyed. He was asked yet again about Mason Mount and he was waxing lyrical about him yet again. I think he was probably briefed about Mason prior to his appointment saying, look, this guy has probably been our player of the season and he was a Lampard favourite. For those Chelsea fans that were upset about Frank Lampard's dismissal, if you keep him out or say negative things about him, they might cause turbulence early doors in your Chelsea tenure. He said positive things about him, he's saying all the right things, but also Mason's performing on the pitch as well, so it looks like he could be a very important player for Thomas Tuchel moving forwards. He was also asked about that comment about Tottenham Hotspur that he made when he was managing Dortmund. It's a little bit churlish and boring from the reporters. He was like, look man, I said I liked the name of the club when I was little, when I was showing off knowing, say, like, acting like I've known English football clubs. Got no real affiliation to them. I played them in a European competition. The end. So hopefully that's the last we'll hear of that from journalists. He was also naturally asked about Timo Werner and his confidence. Now Thomas Tuchel came out and said similar stuff that he's said before when posed this question that is about nurturing his confidence, feel good, rallying him around him and also saying look man he can train well, he can score goals in training showing his technique but until he scores an important goal in say a high profile game he just won't be at 100% again. It will be that 20 odd percent lower because it's in his head. It's like a little demon. Demon. I'm paraphrasing here, I don't think he said demon. But what he was saying is, as soon as it happens, it will happen. Timo's excellent, we move on, it's great, everything's going to be okay. He talked about injuries and stuff, people just kept asking him about Jose Mourinho, is he your, like a role model for you? Which, interestingly, he didn't really say yes, he was like, I'd never really thought about him, which is pretty funny. He was asked about Harry Kane, he was like, Understandably, he's like, yeah, one of the best strikers in the world. He does everything a coach wants from a number nine. Yes, if he doesn't play, it will be better for us. But we are preparing for the eventuality if he somehow does appear on the pitch. And it was at the point when more Tottenham questions came when they started asking him about Deli Alley because he reportedly wanted him at PSG. And he was like, no, mate, I'm not answering that. What are we doing here? You're in the wrong press conference, which I pretty much enjoyed. And they went back to like Chelsea related stuff. More positive words about the academy and Chelsea identity, training the team, stuff that you want to hear, but it's not worth me repeating now in this match preview. He spoke about injuries as well. Kurt Zuma apparently has a little niggle, which fair enough. I mean, less people will get angry if they don't see him in the lineup because a lot of people are massive fans of Kurt Zuma, including myself, although I have no problem with him not being in the lineup, provided we're getting results. Of course, results, you know, game, that's what you want. And interestingly, Kai Havertz. Now, I did put Kai Havertz, spoiler, in my <laughs> predicted lineup, but if he doesn't play, you know, we can just pick an alternative. So let's switch over screens, show you my predicted lineup, and I'm going to take you through each player and what I think is going to happen. And again, don't come at me if it's wrong. I can only do so much guesswork at the moment. Right, so here it is. I have gone for the same formation for the moment. The 3 4 2 1 formation. Now, again, I want to reiterate. I don't think this is necessarily Thomas Tuchel's grand plan for Chelsea Football Club. 
I think he's been dropped in mid-season. He's trying to achieve top four in what is a very competitive and difficult landscape. He's looked at the squad. He wants to be defensively resolute. And like Burnley, Tottenham are probably going to sit in a low block and try and hit Chelsea on the transition if possible. You know, Burnley are arguably in better form than Tottenham. And it works so well against Burnley. You'd imagine it would work so well against Jose Mourinho's current Tottenham Hotspur side, considering their form, etc, etc. So, with that, Eduard Mendy in goal, no surprise there. And also, I think the back three will keep the same, especially considering the injury of Kurt Zuma. I can't imagine Christensen would randomly be dropped into this game, especially in such a big, high-profile must-win. So, Silva in the middle, playing the sweeper, playing some long, beautiful diagonal balls, flanked by Azpilicueta on the right and Antonio Rudiger on the left. I think Azpilicueta out of the three has the most license to go forward and sort of back up Callum Hudson-Odoi who becomes a little bit more of an auxiliary winger. So that's the next player of course, right wing back. Callum Hudson-Odoi, man of the match the last two consecutive matches. You do not drop him of course. Now interestingly, left wing back. <laughs> I think it'll be Marcus Alonso again. I know Thomas Tuchel said Chilwell did nothing wrong. They just wanted the height of Alonso against Burnley. Maybe he'll have that same sort of idea against Tottenham. But we all know the narrative as Chelsea fans. Marcus Alonso scores goals against Tottenham Hotspur. He just does. That's what he does. So maybe he'll be planning to do so again. He played well against Burnley. Chilwell might start and it would not, you know, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world playing left wing back if he plays well there if he looks good in training, but let's be real, after that last performance and the fact how it's against Tottenham and it will be the left wing back position, not left back, Marcus Alonso almost certainly keeps his place for me. Now when it comes to Thomas Tuchel's favoured double sixes in the engine room, I think Jorginho keeps his space, I think he played very well last time out. I think most Chelsea fans would eventually like to see Billy Gilmore given a chance in that particular Jorginho role as one of the double sixes, but I don't think that would be this game. I think that would come against Barnsley, who knows, maybe even Sheffield, um, even though they're looking better and better. So I think Jorginho keeps his place and he's declared fit and he's one of Thomas Tuchel's most uh, I can, praised players, I think. One of the players he's most excited to work with. That is N'Golo Kante. I have a feeling he might come in for the Kovacic role, as in the player who sort of runs around a little bit more, helps defending in transition, which, you know, Hyun Min Son's against the, uh, is in the opposite team, so big, big danger of that. So I have a feeling N'Golo Kante might be dropped into this game to complete the engine room. Now, the undroppable Mason Mount surely keeps his place after some stellar performances off the bench against Wolves and of course, very, very close to Callum hudson Adoy for man of the match last time out. I think Thomas Tuchel appreciates what he offers in that particular role. So I think Mason Mount will also keep his place. And for the other sort of inside forward number 10 behind the striker, I've written Havertz here in my predicted lineup. Thomas Tuchel said he might not be in the squad depending on the scans like Kurt Zuma. So if he doesn't play, then you probably could expect Hakim Ziyech to come in and play that role, um, especially after he declared himself fit. I spoke about this, of course, in today's Chelsea news video. I also speculated if he's the kind of player that Thomas Tuchel will prefer in that position. This game could be the perfect opportunity to find that out. If he starts in that role next to Mason Mount, who knows, excellent, he might have the opportunity to really show off his immense ability. And of course, finally, Timo Werner. I've put Timo Werner in instead of Tammy, who didn't look great last time out. And also, you could say Olivier Giroud, because he can occupy the centre-halves that will be camping in a low block. But I've gone for Timo Werner, because Thomas Tuchel made a comment about how he has pleasant memories against Tottenham, scoring for Leipzig a decisive goal in the Champions League, of course. And lest we forget as well, he scored an excellent goal this season against Tottenham. Of course, they eventually eliminated us in the cup on penalties. But in 90 minutes, we really should have won that game. We dominated them. And Timo Werner scored against them. A lovely spin and low drive. So he's already scored against Tottenham for two different teams. This could be the perfect opportunity for him 
to, you know, find his mojo again. Do you know what I mean? So that's my predicted lineup. Let's move on and talk about the game a little bit more. Massive game, boys and girls. I don't need to tell you it's Chelsea versus Tottenham. It's a new manager. It's against it's against the old manager in Jose Mourinho. It's always a bit spicy and it's always filled with a bunch of narrative. Of course, Harry Kane is really unlikely to play, but you never know. Players often have a tendency of a miraculous recovery prior to playing Chelsea. It's usually someone like Zaha, so who knows? Kane could just magically appear and play against Chelsea with Son, and that, <laughs> that is incredibly dangerous. But it, it, if you look at the table, this is like a six-pointer London derby, ex-manager, new manager, you know, like I said, brimming with narrative. But Chelsea, you'd have to say, are favourites. If you look at Tottenham's performance against Brighton and then Chelsea's performance against Burnley, respectively, and the fact how Kane might be out, Chelsea will be considered favourites. I don't think it's going to be easy as that. I think they're going to defend really, really well. But despite all that, I'm going to predict a... 2-1 win for Chelsea. I'd love it to be like more comprehensive, like 2-0, concise, who knows, maybe like a 3-1, but I'm gonna predict a 2-1, and I'm gonna say a, a Timo Werner goal. So I'm really keen to get your sort of lineups and score predictions and that kind of stuff down in the comment section below. I'll be down there reading them. So please let me know your thoughts on that. Drop a like if you've enjoyed my match preview. Subscribe if you're new. Enjoy the football and I will see you later. Go on, chills. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't I laugh me, baby.